I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's not aliens. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today I really wanted to talk about this recent announcement slash press release that actually doesn't have a scientific paper attached to it just yet, but the papers are coming out. All of this is based on a story that came out in The Guardian, and it's also based on what seems to be a leak from the actual scientists themselves, or possibly from one of the researchers that just couldn't hold it. The idea here is that we may have detected yet another unusual signal coming from an extremely close exoplanetary system to us. The system we're looking at right here, Proxima Centauri. The system that has the nearest terrestrial planet in the habitable zone. And this signal is very reminiscent of the 1977 signal known as the WOW signal that is even today not particularly understood very well because we haven't really been able to detect it again. In other words, what I wanted to talk about today is a potential detection of maybe a techno signature, but most likely something that actually came from planet Earth but we just couldn't identify what it is just yet. And the reason this is so exciting is because it's coming from the world's biggest Techno Signature Investigation, project known as Breakthrough Listen, the incredible project that was started five years ago by some really prominent people. And the idea here was to essentially fund as many possible listening hours on various radio telescopes as possible. But obviously in our search for extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there, we've already discovered a lot of potential signals that were later on found to be nothing more but signals from planet Earth or even signals from a common microwave, the signal that was known as the periton that I discussed in one of the previous videos. And so what exactly makes this particular detection special and why are we even talking about it? Unfortunately, until the papers come out, we're not going to know the details just yet, but from what we've already been told, this signal is specifically interesting for, well, three main reasons. Reason number one is its location. It seems to be coming from Proxima Centauri, because when the scientists were looking at a different location slightly away from Proxima Centauri, the signal disappeared. We know that Proxima Centauri's system is extremely interesting despite this being a red dwarf. It contains at least one planet in the habitable zone, the planet we refer to as Proxima b, and it does contain another planet known as Proxima c that's much much farther away from the star and most likely is some sort of a frozen terrestrial world. Or maybe some sort of a frozen ice giant. Either way, there are at least two planets here, but possibly even three. And at a distance of 4.26 light years away from us, this is as close as it gets. So having a planet in a habitable zone and so close to us is always exciting for us. And so back in 2019, uh, scientists were using this beautiful Australian observatory known as the Parkes Observatory, actually one of the most famous radio telescopes out there, to try to investigate potential emissions coming from the planet simply because they were studying the ridiculously powerful flares coming from the Proxima Centauri star in order for us to really understand how this affects the planets. So by studying the radio signals from the flares, we might be able to get an idea of how powerful these flares are and how likely the planet might actually still have, for example, atmosphere and water. But luckily for us, or I guess surprisingly for us, one of the signals coming from the system was very similar to what we normally detect uh, from planet Earth when it comes to basically just techno signatures, signatures of technology. So for example, compared to let's say a fast radio burst, which was also a mysterious signal that we're still kind of trying to solve, where normally you'll see several different frequencies in the signal itself, and various FRBs will have different frequencies. What's unusual about this particular signal from Proxima Centauri is that it seems to be similar to a single tone of a single frequency of exactly 982 megahertz, or actually 982.002 megahertz. And that's extremely precise and doesn't seem to change or modulate in any way. In other words, the signal doesn't seem to contain any information, but it does seem to be unnaturally flat, unnaturally constant that is which currently just does not have any explanation. Now, before we continue though, quick clarification. Normally, and this is what actually happened to a lot of these signals that were detected in the past, in most cases, these signals turn out to be, for example, flying satellites right above the point where we're looking at. And in many cases, these are either radio communication satellites or in some cases, military satellites that have some sort of a secret technology on board. But in this particular case, the frequency doesn't seem to be associated with anything that we currently have in space, unless of course it is some sort of a maybe secret Chinese satellite for all we know. 
At the same time, because these satellite dishes are so sensitive, even a tiny radio transmission from somewhere nearby could actually accidentally produce these fake signals. This has happened many times before, and at the moment this is still a possibility. It just at this point nobody knows what exactly could have produced this specific signal. But because the signature of the signal is extremely similar to what we normally produce here on planet Earth, it seems to be, well, unnatural, in the sense that it's produced by some sort of a technology, maybe. We just cannot make an assumption yet that it actually came from Proxima Centauri, simply because there's still a chance it was basically maybe captured by something that was passing overhead, or something that was nearby, very close to the satellite dish. Now, the press release does mention that at least four signals were detected, but some may have been just radio interference, and this was over a period of several days. So, if there was something hanging over this uh, area, for example in outer space, it could have been maybe a geostationary object. But at this point, we don't really know and we cannot really assume this because when they tried to look at this location very recently, nothing was actually discovered there. So, if it was an actual signal coming from, for example, space, from maybe a satellite that was there, it may have shifted locations and is most likely not there anymore. And if by some unusual chance this was a signal coming from Proxima Centauri, which is a big big if, in this case it someone just turned it off. It's no longer emitting anything anymore. But once again, this is a really big if and very likely is going to be proven in the next few years to be something most likely artificial made by humans and that was just emitting the signals in this particular frequency. Now, just for fun, I actually tried to look up if anything that we know does emit 982 megahertz, and except for this particular study that investigates these very unique lasers that are used in communication that do emit frequency by essentially blinking the lasers at frequency of about 982 megahertz, there was really nothing else I discovered. And these particular lasers also have a very unique application in essentially fiber communication. I'm not entirely sure if there is some sort of a fiber that might have been causing this, maybe some sort of a cable connection close to the satellite dish, but for all we know this could have been actually one of the possible explanations. Because if you remember five years ago, the explanation for the so-called periton signals was the microwave oven that was actually located not so far from the Parkes Observatory. So the previous unknown radio signals from this observatory were nothing more but someone just opening microwave oven a little bit too soon. But the reason so many scientists are going to be very eagerly awaiting these scientific papers to come out is really because even when there is a tiny tiny possibility that it is aliens, everyone is going to try to investigate this simply because a lot of our science really depends on this, depends on discovering extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there. But in all of the previous attempts, so far it's been just something very easily explainable, such as for example pulsars. And for all we know, maybe this particular discovery will actually lead to a discovery of a new phenomenon we've never known existed around various exoplanets before. But that's not all. There's actually something else that was really interesting about this discovery coming from the tiny pieces of information that were thrown to us by whoever leaked the information to begin with. So it turns out that the signal itself was also slightly blue shifted, or essentially its frequency was increasing a little bit, suggesting that it was moving toward the planet Earth. Or at least that's just one of the implications. It just means that the signal is moving closer to us because the frequency is going up. Now this blue shifting is very well understood, so we can actually figure out how fast it's moving, but until the papers come out, we're not going to be able to know anything about it. And also, unless we actually see the signal again, and unless we're able to somehow detect it from exactly the same location as we found it before, we're not going to be able to confirm this as a techno signature or any kind of an interesting alien signature. It's just going to remain as a potential disturbance from something else terrestrial that we just couldn't figure out. Now, like I said before, 982 megahertz is not a very well used frequency, it's not something we normally use on Earth, but it could also be just someone's broken radio, someone's cell phone not functioning properly, or a plethora of other things that do produce radio frequencies in that specific way, especially because we know in the past very similar signals have been detected and already discredited as something that was basically produced by a device on planet Earth. Nevertheless, the signal has officially been given the designation BLC1, which stands for Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1, because this is the first time we've ever found a signal that has sort of passed all of the other filters. It's exciting enough for us to do a lot of follow-up studies and to try to discover what actually produced this after all. 
Now, probably not aliens, but at this point, I'm sure a lot of scientists are going to put a lot of research into this to find out who truly did it and what actually caused this. But I guess for now I'm not really going to speculate any more about this because there is just nothing else I know except for what you can read in the amazing article written by the, well actually it's the daughter of Frank Drake, Nadia Drake, who wrote a pretty good article about this that I'm leaving in the description below. But the main researcher doing all of this is this wonderful person, Sonia Shake, who I'm sure is going to release the paper about all of this sometime soon. And hopefully really really soon because a lot of us are so excited to see what actually was discovered back in April and May of 2019. Because that's when the original signals were detected and we've just identified them very recently. But until we learn more and until those papers come out, that is unfortunately all I have for you. It's a pretty exciting announcement, it's definitely something really interesting reminiscent of 1977 and it's something that many scientists will be very very eager to learn about and to study in the upcoming months. For now, thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't, check out the articles in the description and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. We're definitely coming back and talking about this, so do subscribe and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I guess I'm not wearing right now, but it does help the channel a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And I just realized that Sophia has her email and Twitter account in there and I totally just put it on the screen and so I'm really really sorry that you're probably going to get a lot of different requests, questions and comments about all of this stuff. So it's going to be a few crazy weeks for you but I guess happy holidays? Anyway, thank you, bye bye.